Hi, my name is Pam Sherratt and I'm going to talk about mowing and field presentation. First of all, we'll look at field orientation. Many athletic fields are positioned north to south. The reason for this is that if it was east to west, the sun would shine in the player's eyes. You can imagine if the sun was rising in the east and setting in the west, at any one time that sun could be shining in an athlete's eyes. So typically we're north to south. start to look at mowing then. Mowing is the most important cultural practice um, that we do on athletic fields. It doesn't just affect how the field plays but it also affects turf health. This is the same field mowed with two different mowers. As you can see mowing can make a huge difference on the quality, the aesthetics and the perception of what a good quality field is just by using a good mower. How high we cut grasses on sports fields, or we mow, we mow them, depends not just on the grass, but also on the type of sport. As you can see there on the left, the sports that where the ball rolls across the grass or somehow interacts with the grass, things like baseball in fields, field hockey, soccer, etc., those tend to be mowed a little bit shorter. So, for example, Columbus Crew Stadium, which is a professional soccer field, the grass will be maintained one inches high. And then you can see as we move down, baseball outfields, moderately maintained fields are maintained a little bit at higher height. And then parks and rec facilities and low maintenance fields are up to about three inches in height. The golden rule of mowing is that no, no more than one third of the grass tissue should be removed at any one time. So basically what that means if the grass is being maintained at two inches tall it mustn't be allowed to get greater than three inches tall before being mowed why don't we do this well because mowing is a stress the plant gets its food source from sugars that are created during the process of photosynthesis green tissue is needed green leaves are needed for the plant to be able to photosynthesize if we keep removing the green tissue we're removing that plant's ability to produce sugars. So we know that if we re remove them one, more than one third, it can severely stress the plant. So the mowing heights are there for a reason, not just because of turf health, but also because of how the turf grows, depending on how high you cut it. The plant on the left is maintained at the higher end of the mowing range, has a deep root system, and has um, more rhizomes. Rhizomes are underground stems depicted here in white. But also, the taller the grass, the more it shades out the base of the grass. And the base of the grass is called the crown. That's where the grass grows from. So with, at the taller end of the mowing height, we have a deep root system, more rhizomes. But perhaps the, the thickness of the grass is not quite as dense. The sward isn't as dense as if it was at the lower end. By comparison, on the right, you can see that the grass is mowed a little bit shorter. It's more dense. It's more thick. There's less rhizomes and less root mass. And what this depicts is that the, the lower the mowing height, the more the grass has to be taken care of. So for an example, a professional soccer field mown at one inch has to be mowed perhaps every day and also has to get supplemental irrigation and fertilizer. A field that is mowed at three inches may only need to be mowed once a week and may not need the same level of water or fertilizer. So these are what the two extremes would look like. The field on the right is mowed at one inch tall. The field on the left has been allowed to get way above four, five inches maybe. The problems associated with the field on the right is that it needs water and fertilizer and manicuring and nurturing far more than the field on the left. But the field on the left doesn't have good playability. It's possibly a safety concern for the athlete and it's infested with weeds, in this instance, um, annual bluegrass, which you can see the flower heads, the seed heads, that's poa annua, which is a common um, weed on athletic fields. Another problem with mowing um, incorrectly is that we can end up with a scalped grass. If you let the grass get to several inches tall before mowing it, we then end up with grass clippings all over the field and that can restrict light to the grass underneath and cause problems with disease etc. 
Another problem with mowing that we can come across is um, dull blades on the mower. This is particularly a problem in spring when a grass called perennial ryegrass gets very stalky and rough and if the mower blades aren't really sharp you'll see this jagged tearing and browned grass looks like a disease but it isn't it's just um, dull blunt mower blades there are different types of equipment the high end the professional mowers are real mowers they have a, a cylindrical we, uh, reel on the front and they're used to cut grass lower than one inch tall these are walk behind and in Europe that's called pedestrian these are walk behind mowers used um, for professional facilities and training academies and the good thing about these mowers as you can see top right that you can switch out the mower blades for things like brushes and groomers that also help with surface management there's ride on mowers also as well as the walk behind or pedestrian mowers and you can see there's a real mower there on the bottom left with that um, cylinder of blades that cuts grass lower than one inch if we want to cut grass higher than one inch we have to use a rotary mower which is on the top right and the blade is horizontal and it spins around and cuts the grass and it's ideal for grasses that need to be maintained greater than an inch as far as removing clippings on sand based and professional stadiums the, the clippings are removed um, but on park and rec and high school many collegiate and soil fields the clippings should be returned Next we'll talk about mowing patterns or stripes which really do make a difference on a field particularly if there's an important event or a televised event. The stripes are basically um, created by light to, by the light shining on the grass depending on whether the grass has been rolled away from you or towards you. So the light stripe, the mower, the mower and the roller have rolled the grass and it's facing away from your eye. The dark stripe the mower has and the roller has pressed the grass down and the grass is pointed towards your eye and that's how the mowing stripes are created. On American football fields the stripes or patterns are typically sideline to sideline so that they are um, easy to follow for the 10 yard or the 5 yard uh, increments. On soccer fields also they're either crisscross pattern like this or they go sideline to sideline because there's a linesman running up and down the sides that needs to call the offside rule and it would be probably quite difficult to call the offside rule if there was a complicated mowing pattern on the field. Baseball fields um, are much more creative in the, in the way that they can be uh, the patterns. Dr. Um, Dave Miller sorry Dave Meller at the Boston Red Sox has, has written a book about mowing patterns and how to create them. Painting lines and logos is also an important part of field presentation. This is a wheel-to-wheel -wheel line marker which is common in Europe. There's just one or two of these in the United States. The paint is latex based and it's basically mixed with water or diluted with water. Um, a new thing in athletic field marking paint which is hopefully going to revolutionize the industry is that rather than buying uh, dozens and dozens of buckets of white paint which then obviously these plastic buckets end up in the landfill um, there are companies now that are starting to produce powdered paint that is mixed uh, mixed up on site and then the cardboard boxes can be recycled so that's kind of a new thing that's happening right now in athletic field paint there are guidelines as far as outlines and boundaries for every sport so the sports governing body for that particular sport will clearly say how thick the, the lines have to be, uh, whether the line is in play or out of play, and how big the field should be. Uh, so for example, in association football, the baseline where the goal is, the line should be as wide as the goal post. Um, so each governing body will dictate line markings and sizes of fields. There's all different types of painting equipment, uh, there's gas powered equipment, there's laser guided equipment, there's the wheel to wheel which is the old standard equipment. Um, the paint is mixed at a 2 to 1 or a 3 to 1 or a 4 to 1 dilution with water and then put out on the grass. Ideally it's painted in two directions so that both sides of the grass leaf get painted. 
and you can either do a really good job and make a great impression or you can really mess up and make a horrible impression so whenever you're putting paint out on grass uh, it may take longer to put a string line down or to do it when it's not windy uh, but it really can make a difference you can see the one top right there where the um, the person that was applying the paint was actually walking in the paint top left there you can see that was applied on a very windy day bottom left no string lines were put out they just they just kind of eyeballed it and got it wrong and then bottom right this used to be common many years ago where the grass was actually burnt and killed with things like diesel and gasoline and, and weed killer and hopefully we're moving away from those days because those ridges get sunken in and can actually become a trip hazard paint can be applied not just by the um, paint sprayers but also with things like rollers and with aerosols logos are a big part of the game day experience and uh, becoming more and more popular sometimes the logos on TV are actually just put onto the TV and aren't actually on the field like you'll see that on Premiership Soccer quite a bit but painting logos on the grass certainly does make a big impression there's many different ways to do that stencils can be created by actually making them out of wood or metal as you can see top right um, you can make them out of fabrics or cardboard as you can see bottom uh, right um, another good way to do it is to get a picture that you like and to use an overhead projector to shine that image on the wall and then to hang a sheet or plywood or something um, that the image is projected onto and then you can cut that image out as a stencil um, a lot of the professional field people who apply logos professionally will use uh, computer aided design software to do that or coordinates out in the field very talented people will do them freehand there's some do's and don'ts as far as painting um, we know that the reds and the blue paints will can kill the grass the darker colors there seems to be something in the pigment that kills the grass um, but typically a white base coat will be put underneath a color they think there's a feeling out there that it will protect the grass somewhat but more than anything the base coat is used just to really make the grass stand out more and be more vibrant paints can also be used to mark special occasions this was um, on the anniversary of Lamar Hunt's death Lamar Hunt was the owner of Columbus Crew Stadium and and put a lot into the turf grass science industry had great respect for field managers and uh, it was a nice way to honor him during the game to paint out his initials on one of the games a new thing that's happening in the industry not just in sports turf but in golf is the use of dyes and pigments and this is basically just green dye that's used to green up the field so for example this picture was taken in April of this year where the grass on the field was just coming out of winter dormancy it was kind of looking a bit light green and somewhat still a little bit brown and spraying it with a green dye um, doesn't do anything to affect the turf health and it didn't do anything to negative to the turf but it just made the grass look greener for the event which was televised and this concludes the slideshow mowing and field presentation <laughs>